Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be putting together the costume from the new Land and Sea pattern. There have been so many movies released lately that have inspired me to create new outfits for my dolls. This summer's release of the Barbie movie started it all with my creation of the re-enchanted pattern. Hot on the heels of that movie was also the release of The Little Mermaid, and that happened in combination with the theme for this month's Club Grace subscription box. Land and Sea is a nod to that beautiful little mermaid that gets her wish to become human. Let's go ahead and get started. The skirt for the Land and Sea pattern consists of four pieces. We have the front section, side front, side back section, and the back section, as well as a waistband. I did apply some fusible interfacing to the back of the waistband to give it a little bit of stability, and the skirt is fully lined. The first step in the construction is to take those side front sections and sew them to the front, and the back sections to the back, and we'll do that step now. Next, we'll sew the side back sections to the back sections. We'll sew the front and back sections together at the side seams. With all of the skirt sections sewn together, we'll repeat those same steps with the lining, take it over to the ironing board and press those seams open. With the skirt pressed and the lining constructed, we're gonna place them right sides together and sew the hemline. You'll wanna check both sides of that hem to make sure that everything looks good. And if it does, you're gonna go ahead and press the hemline with the lining to the inside of the skirt. Next, we'll sew the lining to the skirt at the left and right back openings using a zigzag stitch. To add a little bit more of a princess effect to our skirt, we've taken our tool piece. We're gonna pull the uh, gathering stitches at the top of that tool and pin it to the right sides of the skirt, matching the centers. Once you have the tool matched up, you're going to go ahead and run two gathering stitches along the waistband edge. With our gathering stitches across the top of the skirt, we're going to grab the waistband and turn one of the long edges up a quarter of an inch and give it a press. We're going to pull the gathering stitches at the top of the skirt to match the waistband, place it right sides together and sew the seam. Once you check both sides, you can trim down the seam allowance on the inside and give it a little bit of a press. You'll take the waistband and fold it over with the folded edge to the inside, hand finishing it to the waist seam. With our waistband sewn in place, we're gonna sew the center back seam from the hem edge to the dot as indicated on the pattern. Once I get a quick fit to the doll and add a snap to the waistband, the skirt portion of our project is complete. From here, we'll turn our attention to the overdress for the land and sea pattern. Let's quickly identify the pieces that are included for the overdress. And as you can see here, we have a center front section and a side front, a back section and a side back, upper sleeve, lower sleeve, and then the actual over skirt skirt section. In order to get started, we're gonna grab our pieces, we're gonna clip in towards the curved edges, and then we'll sew the side front sections to the front and the side back sections to the back over at the sewing machine. Keep the overlay of the center front section from slipping. I used a little bit of 505 adhesive spray. Now that I have it attached there, I'm just gonna sew the side front sections to the front section. Next, we'll take the side back sections and sew it to the back sections.
With the side sewn in place, we'll take all those pieces to the ironing board and press the seams open. With our seams pressed open, we'll take the front of the bodice and we'll take the back of the bodice and place them right sides together and sew the shoulder seams. With the shoulder seams pressed open, we're gonna turn our attention to the sleeves for just a moment. We're gonna take the lower portion of the sleeve and pin it right sides together to the lining and sew the hem edge. With the hem edge sewn, you're just gonna trim that seam allowance down, turn the lining to the inside of the sleeve and press the hem edge. Once you have that complete, you can go ahead and take a few basting stitches to hold the lining to the exterior portion of the lower sleeve. With the sleeve lining basted to the sleeve, we're gonna grab our trim. And in this case, I'm just using a 1 8 inch trim that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. So I'm gonna place the trim on the actual hem edge of the sleeve. And then I'm also gonna grab the upper sleeves as well. You'll notice on the pattern that there's three places that you're gonna add that trim. And I've already written on my pattern piece with my heat erasable marker. So I'm gonna sew these three lines onto the upper sleeve as well. And then we'll move on to the next step. With our trim sewn in place, we're gonna run a gathering stitch across the top of the sleeve cap, as well as along the sleeve edge. Next, we're gonna gently pull the gathers at the lower portion of that sleeve and matching that center strip to the center of the lower sleeve, we'll pin it with right sides together and get the two sewn. Let's take that over to the ironing board and press that seam down. With the seam pressed down, we're gonna pull gently that gathering stitch along the sleeve cap, place it right sides together to the bodice and sew it into the armhole openings. With our sleeves installed, we're gonna place the bodice right sides together, sewing the back sections to the front at the side seam. You'll check both sides of that, turn the garment right side out and give it a press. Here's a quick look at where the bodice is so far. Off camera, I created the lining to the bodice using the exact same steps we did to create the exterior portion. I did two additional steps, which included doing a zigzag stitch along the armhole opening, as well as turning up the hem edge of the lining a quarter of an inch and giving it a press. So at this point, we'll place the lining to the bodice with right sides together and pin around the neckline and down the left back opening. With the lining pinned to the bodice, we're gonna sew across that neck edge and down that left back opening. You're gonna stop that stitch one quarter of an inch from the waist edge of the bodice and do a little back stitch to secure. You wanna carefully check both sides before you trim in towards that seam allowance. And if everything looks to be good, you can clip in a little bit, trim it down and turn it right side out, and then we'll give it a press. So 
So I grabbed one of my Grace dolls and I got a quick fit of that bodice to make sure everything's coming together and I think the fit is fine. So the next step is to turn our attention to the actual overskirt skirt sections. You're gonna place your satin right side up. You're gonna place the overlay fabric right on top of that. And then on top of that, you're gonna place the lining. You're gonna sew those two pieces together around the rounded edge, and then we'll bring it back over to the ironing board, trim it towards the seam allowance, and press it right side out. I would recommend that you run two gather stitches along the edge, one very close to that raw edge and one more than a quarter of an inch across. That way you're gonna get a nice tight gather as we pull the strings to fit the bodice. We're gonna match the finished edges of the gathers to the center of the bodice and pin them all the way around to the back. You'll remember that the left back opening actually has a finished edge, so we're gonna tuck that under a quarter of an inch and we're gonna match it completely to the edge of the right back opening. I went ahead and removed the second gathering stitch that was below the waist seam. The next step is gonna to be to take that right back opening and zigzag the lining to the actual raw edge of the exterior portion of the garment. From here, we'll grab our needle and thread and we'll finish the lining to that seam. Here's a quick fit to our doll to see how the project is coming together and I really like it. The overdress looks really nice through the waist. Let's flip it over and see how it comes together in the back. It matches up nicely with the back center seam. From here, the final step will be to mark placement for the snaps on the back of the bodice, get those sewn in place and get our final photographs for our doll. Here's a few photos of our finished project on our Grace doll and I think she looks fantastic. I recommend that you also consider sewing this outfit in teal, which looks beautiful with this rich red hair. I had a great time putting this pattern together for the RTB 101 body dolls. If you have any questions about the construction of this pattern, please list it in the comment section below. As always, I thank you guys for your time and for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.